Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk about raw milk because some dairy advocates insist that the risks of consuming milk that people like me talk about and other dairy products are related to the fact that almost all dairy products in the United States, those that are sold commercially, have been pasteurized. Now, a little history on pasteurization. It was first required in Michigan in 1948 and in 1987, the FDA banned interstate sales or distribution of non-pasteurized milk and milk products. Now, intrastate laws vary from state to state and range from complete prohibition to permitting sales through some farms or retail outlets. At this time, raw milk sales are legal in 30 states, but in the other states, it's pretty easy to get around restrictions because people participate in things like cow sharing arrangements in which farmers are paid to take care of the cow and the milk products are shared with the group. Now, the problem with raw milk is that serious illnesses due to the pathogens in raw milk have been reported. According to one report from the Centers for Disease Control, during one six-year period, there were 81 outbreaks in 26 states, resulting in 979 illnesses and 73 hospitalizations, no deaths, fortunately, and all kinds of different bacteria identified as cause. Now, symptoms of infection, common symptoms of infection with the pathogens involved include things like diarrhea, cramping, abdominal pain, fever, and vomiting. In some cases, the diarrhea can be bloody, and in people who are not healthy, the risks of infection can be systemic and life-threatening. Well, a lot of people in our country, including an awful lot of children, are not very healthy, which means that consuming raw milk with pathogens is actually a very risky thing. Now, aside from bacterial infection, consuming raw milk does not change the risk factors associated with dairy, which include things, you hear me talk about this all the time, chronic infections, constipation, asthma, allergies, juvenile diabetes, multiple sclerosis, autoimmune diseases, and breast and prostate cancer, osteoporosis, I mean, the list goes on. And the reason is that pesky milk protein is still in raw milk, and that's the problem with all of these diseases. So. Here's where I stand on this issue. I'm a libertarian at heart. I would like to have less government interference in the lives of humans in this country. Having said that, government regulation sometimes is helpful, and I'm not sure that a prohibition against raw milk is appropriate, but I would be willing to let the sales go as long as there were warning signs, uh, proper warning signs, not only about the pathogens in raw milk, but also other serious diseases associated with consuming dairy products. Do I think that's gonna happen? Yeah, not so much, but that's what my solution to this would be. All right, then I want to talk to you about a related issue. Vitamin D supplements seem to go along with milk and dairy products and calcium and all that sort of thing. Large meta-analysis shows that vitamin D supplements don't prevent myocardial infarction, stroke cancer, or hip fracture in seniors. A second meta-analysis by the same research groups a group said that or showed that future clinical trials were not likely to show much benefit either, and I'll come back to that in a second. So the lead researcher, Mark Boland, medical doctor, or PhD rather, told Medscape Medical News, the takeaway message is that there is little justification currently for prescribing vitamin D to prevent heart attacks, stroke, cancer, or fractures in otherwise healthy people living in the community. He was able to find benefit in two studies that show that the pills reduce the risk of hip fracture for elderly women living in assisted care or nursing home facilities. So Boland stated that frail elderly people in residential care facilities might benefit from vitamin D, but quote, for other people, vitamin D supplements are unnecessary. This is part of a continuing trend in medicine where something that is valuable for a tiny subset of the population is marketed to the entire population. And the entire population doesn't benefit and is often hurt by it, the case with vitamin D. Boland acknowledged that lower vitamin D levels have been associated with many conditions, but that, quote, evidence from randomized clinical trials has been fairly weak in showing that taking supplements changed health outcomes. Now, interestingly enough, the meta-analysis included data from 44 reports of 40 randomized controlled trials. And the participants took fairly hefty doses of vitamin D, some of them as high as 100,000 to 150,000 international units every three months. Their blood levels of vitamin D went to normal or higher as a result of taking the supplements. The problem was it didn't change their health. And that's another common problem we have. You can take drugs, you can take supplements, you can do a lot of things to manipulate biomarkers, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ending up healthier and your outcomes are going to be different as a result. Now, Boland's team reported 
that the body of evidence showing vitamin D to be useless is so large at this point in time that future studies with similar designs are highly unlikely to change the um, conclusions that these researchers and many others have reached. I covered a, a meta-analysis that included close to 500 studies essentially showing the same thing uh, sometime back in 2014. Now here's the problem. Vitamin D supplements totaled $605 million in sales in 2011. And in addition to that, you've got the doctor's office visits, the lab tests, and, and all kinds of other things that, that add hundreds of millions more dollars to this whole thing. So vitamin D is a big business, and the growing body of evidence showing that it's useless for most people and potentially harmful, not likely to change much. So it's up to the consumer to just say no to the supplements. They're, at, at best, they're a waste of money, and in some situations, they've been shown to be harmful. All right, that's all for today and for the week, as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.